Hi, this is Sudha Chandran. I have finished my bachelor's in aeronautical engineering. Today I am going to present a paper which is nasal structure design. In this nasal structure design, design we are going to see about the functions of nasal and what are the systems in the systems involved in nasal and components and the design design structures as well as the drag estimation method, after body drag estimation method, for body drag estimation method. And also we are going to see about the GDNT stack up analysis as well as the design checks for the GDNT. First we are going to see about the nasal. What is nasal? Nasal is a structure which is surrounding surrounding the aircraft engine and it has to be made up of acoustical components and aer aerodynamics component as well as the directional directional structure. And it is attached to the attached to the attached to the wing by pylon. And the, the main functions of the nasal are the main functions of the nasals are used to reducing the uh, reverse thrust as well as the uh, producing the uh, producing the exhaust to the uh, through the exhaust nozzle and uh, it's, uh, it has to be designed aerodynamically as well as the uh, it has to be designed by, by using NACA, NACA 1 design rules that is the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics and uh, it has to be fixed perpendicular to the wing as well as the parallel to the fuselage and uh, the main functions uh, that we are going to see about the functions of nozzle for high high bypass ratio engine, the nasals are doing some functions. Uh, and it's uh, air intake to the engine uh, for the exhaust, as well as the uh, nasal doing the uh, exhaust to the uh, high efficiency, uh, high efficiency of the thrust. And the thrust reverser doing uh, thrust reverser doing the uh, provides reverse thrust for the actual uh, deacceleration of the uh, aircraft. And the nasal suppressor, nasal suppressor is used to reduce the noise. Nice, which is, uh, the, which is coming from the engine. These are the main functions uh, done by the done by the nozzle. And it, uh, this is the diagram shows the nozzle structure of the aircraft. And it has to be divided into th three parts, which is fore body, fore body, and uh, mid body and after body. Fore body is nothing but the inlet cowl of the nozzle. And mid body is the fan cowl, which is uh, fixed at the center of the nozzle. And final one is after body. After body is nothing but the exhaust of the exhaust of the nozzle, which is the uh, and nozzle, nozzle of the nasal structure and this is the diagram shows the nozzle of the uh, uh, nozzle of the aircraft and it's having the inlet inlet uh, thrust reverse uh, exhaust nozzle exhaust cone as well as the inlet cone and the fan cone this is the uh, this is the uh, component which is involved in the nasal structure and this is the this is the diagram shows this, this is the this is the inlet that shows for the cooling purpose of the nozzle and uh, generally it is uh, it is fixed at the center of the thrust reverse uh, and it has to be designed aerodynamically as well as it has to be followed uh, NACA one design rules. And next we are going, next we are going to move on to the components of the nozzle structure. And it's having the inlet fan cool, thrust reverser, exhaust cone, exhaust nozzle, nozzle and pylon. The first one we are going to show about the inlet. And in this structure, this is the inlet in, inlet of the nozzle structure. The main functions of the uh, inlet is to Intake the air from the atmosphere and it directs to the directs to the engine as well as the compressor compressor blades and the turbine blades and it has to be fixed at the leading edge of the nozzle and it's a, it has to be it has the main functions of the inlet is to uh, uh, compress the air from the atmosphere as well as the uh, directs to directs to the engine and next one is fan cold fan cold is nothing but the it's a, it is a structure surrounding by the fan cases of the engine. The main functions of the fan cone is to provide access to the engine for the servicing as well as the maintenance of the engine. And then the uh, thrust reverser. Thrust, thrust reverser is a structure, it is made up of uh, uh, acoustical reduction panel and uh, generally it is used for uh, providing the reverse thrust as well as the deacceleration of the aircraft. And it also used for the uh, short, uh, short landing purpose of the aircraft. And it has to be it has to be classified into two types. One is clamshell thrust reverser, and another one is uh, cascade cascade type thrust reverser. Next one is exhaust cone. Exhaust cone is nothing but it is fixed at the center of the after body. The main functions of the exhaust cone is used to direct the direct the exhaust thrust to, uh, through exhaust nozzle. And it has to be manufactured by the high temp extreme high temperature resistant material like uh, titanium as well as the uh, uh, in color material, these are the materials uh, which, which can withstand the high temperature, high temperature in the sense of the uh, engine. And next one is exhaust nozzle. Exhaust nozzle is it is made up of acoustical cylinder, and generally it is used to uh, constricting the flow uh, as well as the maximize the velocity of the engine. 
and it, it has to be fixed at the outlet of the outlet of the nasal section that is a, a generally we call after body of the nasal and next one is pylon pylon is a structure it is used to connect the nasal structure to the wing and it's a housing it's a it is housing the electrical wiring as well as the fuel fuel tubes these are the housings within the uh, pylon structure and it has to be made up of the same materials as well as used in the nasal structure and this is the diagram shows the where the pylon is fixed this is the exhaust pylon structure of the nasal and see it is generally it is used to connect the nasal structure to the wing of the aircraft next we are going to see about the what are the system which is involved in the nasal structure design first one is control linkage control linkage is nothing but the it's a linkage between the uh, uh, linkage between the nasal uh, nasal components as well as the nasal structures that is the linkage between the fore body and mid body and linkage between the mid body to outer body that is the linkage between the inlet coil and fan coil and the nozzle of the uh, uh, nozzle of the nasal structure and next one is fuel system fuel system is nothing but that it's uh, involved in the it's the engine fuel system and generally it involves the fuel of the engine as well as the oil hydraulics what are the things which is used in the engine these are all the functions of the this fuel system and next one is electrical system electrical system is nothing but that the the housing of housing of wiring within the engine for the operating of the engine and the uh, uh, wiring involved in the pylon structure these are the these are the functions of the electrical system next one is thrust reverser thrust generally thrust reverser is made up of acoustical reduction of panel and it is used to it's used to reducing the reducing the thrust of this reverse thrust as well as the de de deacceleration of the aircraft and generally it is used for the short landing short landing purpose so we are, we are so we need short runway as for the landing purpose of the aircraft and next one is fire protection system fire protection system is generally used for the prevention of fire and the fire product, the fire is if there is fire occur due to the high high heat of the engine as well as the high temperature of the engine the fire protection system we use it Uh, generally hollow hollow mounted divan and carbon dioxide and water glycols are used for the uh, for a fire production system and it has to be found due to the oil grease hydraulic switches to be involved in the uh, engine uh, aircraft engine and next one is anti aging agent system anti aging agent system generally liquid calcium chlorides are used for the anti aging system in the nasal structure of the aircraft uh, these are all things about the function components and the systems involved in the nasal structure next we are going to see about the what are the factors we are considering for the designing the nasal structure that is uh, engine burst consideration foreign object induction system and weight fuel volume and nose gear collapse generally the structure of the nasal should be made high resistance as well as the high strength as well as the high stiffness material so it, it has to be stand the high temperature and the high load high stresses we are we are considering the we are considering for designing purpose that is the first one is engine burst consideration engine burst consideration is due to the due to the engine due to the that is the blasting of engine and uh, if there is any fire fire occurs within the engine the engine burst consider consideration that is the structure should not be the nasal structure should not be deformed in the structure as well as it should not be affected as well as it should not be should not be cracked in the structure and next one is foreign object induction problem that is uh, uh, birds uh, that is uh, birds are the other foreign objects uh, other, other other foreign objects are considered for the this problem next one is weight weight is nothing but say, say we are manufacturing the nasal structure with, uh, by co using composite material like uh, nano rice posted material as well as the py pylon as well as py pyrolis these are the materials used for the uh, lightweight lightweight uh, lightweight material for designing the nasal structure and fuel, next one is fuel volume and it is comes under the weight of the fuel and the as, as well as the water what are the oil hydraulic switches involved in the engine system final one is nose gear collapse nose gear, nose gear collapse is nothing but the ground clearance of the aircraft that is the distance between the inlet hole to the uh, ground of the uh, ground uh, ground ground uh, that is the ground clearance and next one is aerodynamics aerodynamics is the main consideration for the designing of nasal structure and the, the, the nasal structure design should be fulfill the aerodynamic performance as well as the requirements of the aerodynamics 
the time there are the is generally useful for the uh, yeah, if there is any problem arising from the flow of air and other topics involved in the flow of air generally the time aerodynamics is used the natural structure design should be fulfilled the aerodynamics characteristics as well as the aerodynamic performance and the requirements uh, it has to be fulfilled fulfilled uh, with the solid objects and we are, what are the things we are going to consider for the design purpose of the aerodynamics that is one is drag drag the drag is nothing but a force uh, trying to pull the airplane backward direction uh, a throttle drag produced by the air, airplane is the sum of the profile drag and induced drag as well as the parasite drag so we are considering the drag for the aerodynamics and, uh, and next one is interference and a sur surface reference and noise and vibrations and this noise and vibrations of the uh, occur due to the engine rotation as well as the landing air of the aircraft next one is thrust thrust is the thrust is the force that is produced by the engine and the next one is bypass ratio level bypass ratio is nothing but the total air the total air enter enter into the engine and to the, the how much of air taken for the combustion uh, combustion process of the engine this is the ratio between the uh, the ratio for the bypass ratio and these are the these are the consideration for the designing purpose of the nasal structure and next one is uh, we are going to see about the types of nasal generally there are two 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 types of nasal involved in the aircraft that is separate exhaust nozzle another one is mixed exhaust nozzle in separate exhaust nozzle the fan duct to flow as well as the core duct to flow exist separately that is the exhaust of the nozzle uh, that is the thrust of the nozzle exits separately and within the, that's the outside of the nozzle this is the structure shows the separate exhaust nozzle and next one is mixed exhaust nozzle in mixed exhaust nozzle that is the exhaust of the thrust within mixed within the engine and it's a low velocity as well as the, it's giving the better performance compared to the separate exhaust nozzle and this is the diagram shows the separate exhaust nozzle and the mixed exhaust nozzle Mixed separate exhaust nozzle is a, a, a high velocity for the, for the better performance, and mixed exhaust velocity is a low low velocity in, in within the engine for the better performance. This is the difference between separate exhaust nozzle as well as the mixed exhaust nozzle. And what are the various shapes of uh, no, no, nozzles in the used in the airlines, which is uh, uh, separate exhaust nozzle is uh, used for the Boeing 767 aircraft. And uh, the mixed exhaust nozzle used for the uh, Boeing 777 aircraft and the Airbus 3, Airbus 330 and Airbus 320s are used uh, separate exhaust nozzle. And as well as the fighter aircraft meet, uh, MD-11 and the uh, Boeing, Boeing Airbus aircraft uh, A310s are used for mixed exhaust nozzle as well as the separate exhaust nozzle. And this is the uh, diagram shows the various, various types of nozzle involved in the uh, airlines as well as the aircraft structures. Next we are going to see about the uh, types of thrust reverser. Generally the uh, thrust, reverser, uh, thrust reverser is made up of acoustical reductional kernel for reducing the noise of the natural structure and it, is, it, provides, the, it provides the reverse thrust to the, uh, to the aircraft and it is it's used for generally a short, uh, short takeoff and short landing purpose and it is the acceleration the aircraft to the backward direction. There are two types of thrust reverser is used. One is clamshell thrust reverser and another one is thrust, uh, cascade thrust reverser. In clamshell thrust reverser, the exhaust of the nozzle exits separately. That is, it has to be exit in the two ways. This is the diagram shows where the exhaust of the exhaust nozzle, uh, exhaust of the nozzle exit which direction. This is the diagram shows the thrust of the uh, thrust of the engine exit separately in two, two directions. In cascade thrust, uh, thrust reverser, the, 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 the thrust of the engine exit within the, within the thrust reverser section and this is the, this is the, this is the exit of, this, this is the exit of the thrust reverser within the engine section. This is the diagram shows the clamshell thrust reverser as well as the cascade thrust reverser and uh, generally it is made up of acoustical reductional panel and it's translating the slews that, that, that is the uh, side backs of the thrust reverser the main, the main functions of the thrust reverser is uh, uh, to provide the deacceleration of the axis that is to provide the reverse thrust to the aircraft and what are the advantages of this thrust reverser is it is used to save the fuel 
and improve the efficiency of the engine as well as the reducing the brake uh, reduce, reducing the wear on the brake and enabling to the aircraft in short landing as well as the short takeoff conditions and uh, this is the main advantages which uh, of the thrust reverser next we are going to see about the geometry consider considerations uh, we are going to see uh, design the nacelle structure what are the geometry considerations we are considering for the design the nacelle structure first one is diameter generally the uh, nacelle structure is uh, designed based on the uh, parameters of the engine as well as the uh, dimensions diameters of the engine so uh, according to the engine we are going to design the nacelle structure we are considering the diameter that is uh, considering the engine diameter so that only we are designing the nacelle structure that is the uh, inlet diameter as well as the exit diameter as the maximum diameter of the nacelle next one is length length that is the length of the nacelle as well as the fineness ratio fineness ratio is uh, ratio between the length of the nacelle to the maximum diameter of the nacelle and next one is wing and fuselage position we are considering the wing position as well as the fuselage position so according to the wing and fuselage position we are going to design the nacelle structure and then pylon geometry considering the pylon geometry for, uh, with respect to the with respect to the nacelle structure and ground clearance crash section to the house axis and intake geometry intake geometry is nothing but the inlet cowl of the engine we are considering the that is the inlet geometry and the lift section is nothing but the uh, fan cowl of the uh, fan cowl of the nacelle structure and uh, these are the main geometry consideration for designing the nacelle structure next we are going to see about the composite materials what are the compost composite materials used for designing the uh, nacelle structure generally it's a uh, light material as well as the light high stiffness high strength materials are used to, to design the uh, nacelle structure so uh, generally used for nano reinforced material that is a pyrolysis pyrolysis are generally used for the uh, designing the nacelle structure its uh, high treatment is uh, more than 1000 degrees celsius and it has to be made up of uh, high strength material as well as high stiffness material so it can withstand the high temperature as well as the uh, high, uh, it can withstand, uh, withstand the high loads in the uh, loading conditions next one is exhaust nozzle that is the nozzle of the nozzle section exhaust nozzle is made up of high temperature uh, uh, extreme high temperature material like inconel 600 and uh, titanium materials are it can withstand the so it can withstand the high, high temperature as well as the high load so these are the composite materials used for designing the nacelle structure next one is uh, tools used for designing purpose what are the tools used for designing the nacelle structure first one is cat generally the generally the components of the designing by using the uh, catia solid works and uh, unigraphic software generally used for the aerospace aerospace designing products uh, mainly catia are used for designing the uh, aerospace components as well as the fuselage of uh, fuselage wings and uh, uh, empennage sections of the aircraft generally uh, catia softwares are used for the modeling of uh, modeling of aerospace components once finishing uh, one, one finishing the modeling modeling of the aerospace components next we are going to the uh, analyzing purpose of the analyzing of the aerospace components is generally used for the nastron patterns uh, uh, hypermass as well as solvers like uh, radio soft disk like uh, ls dyna these are the generally uh, ca tools used for the analyzing the uh, analyzing the nozzle structure next one is nacelle design method before before designing the nacelle structure what are the things we are going to consider for the designing purpose first one is uh, the material should be isentropic and as well as adiabatic and the flow should be uniform flow and it has a one dimensional equation for estimation the drag as well as the lift of the lift of the aircraft and the material should be thermally perfect these are the these are the assumptions we are, uh, we are going to consider for the designing of nacelle structure and it has to be designed by using uh, NACA one designing rules it is for the national advisory advisory committee for aeronautics 
design should be using Naga on series rules. And the, and, and the design should be fulfilled the aerodynamic, aerodynamic characteristics as well as the aerodynamic performance and as well as the aerodynamic requirements. These are the basic basic consideration we are going to we are going to design in the nasal structure and we are going to consider the mass flow rate of the mass flow rate of the nasal as well as the critical mass flow rate and the drag waste Mach number and the inlet diameter of the engine uh, outlet diameter of the engine and length of the engine and maximum diameter of the engine. We are going to consider this thing and uh, next one is uh, according to according to the engine parameters as well as the engine the engine dimension we are going to design the nasal structure. First one is four body design method. In four body the design should be uh, divided into two types. One is four body design method that is single coil of the nozzle. Another one is after body design method that is the exhaust of the exhaust of the nozzle. In four body design method, first of all we are going to calculate the thought diameter that is DTS and the highlighted diameter DHL. And this is the diagram shows the inlet coil inlet coil of the nasal structure. And the, the highlighted the distance between the highlighted line is uh, the highlighted diameter. And the distance between the inlet tip, in, uh, upper inlet tip to the lower inlet tip is the thought diameter. That is the inlet of the inlet of the nasal structure. And DF is nothing but the DF is nothing but the diameter of the fourth body. And D max is nothing but the maximum diameter of the nozzle. And LF is the length of the fourth body. And this is the diagram shows the inlet inlet of the inlet of the nozzle. First, we are going to, uh, going to calculate the lip contraction ratio. That is the distance between that's the ratio between the highlighted diameter to the throat diameter. That is uh, AHL divided by ATH equal to DHL square divided by DTH square. Uh, DHL is the highlighted diameter and as well as the DTH is the throat diameter. And AHL is the area of the highlighted uh, area and uh, ATH is the throat area. And uh, generally, the lip contraction ratio is. Uh, then just between the 1.25 to 1.35 according to the Naka 1 design rules. So using uh, using Naka design Naka 1 design rules, we are going to design the Naka designing the four body four body of the four body four body of the nasal structure. Next one is four body length four body length and the maximum diameter of the nozzle. Four body length is calculated by using this for uh, using L of equal to D H L divided by D D max D H L is the uh, highlighted diameter and D max is the maximum diameter. By using this, this formula, we calculate the four body length and um, as well as the ma maximum diameter of the uh, inlet coil. After that, we are going uh, we are going to calculate the critical mass flow rate of critical mass flow rate of the inlet coil as well as the drag race Mach number for the four body design. Critical Mach number is calculated using MFRC uh, critical equal to 1 minus 4, 1 minus DHL divided by D max square uh, divided by LF into D max. That is, uh, DHL is the uh, highlighted diameter and D max is the maximum diameter. And LF is the length of the four body, D max is the maximum diameter of the uh, four, uh, maximum diameter of the inlet coil. Once finishing the uh, mass flow, we are going to calculate the drag race Mach number. In drag race Mach number, we are, uh, we are using this formula that is 1 minus 1 by 8 into root of 1 minus DHL. Uh, D max square and divided by LF into D max. LF is nothing but the length of the fourth body and the highlighted diameter as well as the maximum diameter. Once finishing the, once we are calculating the critical mass flow rate as well as the drag race Mach number, according to do this, according to these two things, we are going to plot the graph which is for the critical mass flow rate as well as the drag race Mach number. And this is the diagram shows. Where the mass flow rate and as well as the drag is Mach number formed with respect to the maximum diameter as well as the highlighted diameter of the inlet coil, and the Mach number should be formed in the within the range of 1.1.5 to 1.6, and the critical mass flow rate is formed within the range of 1.7 to 1.7 to 1.8, and with respect to the length of the four body to the divided the maximum maximum diameter of the inlet coil. And next one is the effect of critical mass mass flow rate and the drag length Mach number of the nasal performance. And this is uh, this is the this is the effect of mass flow rate to the critical mass flow rate to the drag length Mach number. And this is the exact area shows the where the where the increase in the spillage drag as, as well as where the increase in the waste drag. 
This is this flat is drop between the coefficient drop to the maximum uh, mass flow rate of the uh, inlet curve, and then generally spillage drop is formed between the uh, coefficient drop to the uh, mass flow rate of the inlet curve, and it's uh, formed due to the excess of the air, excess of the air within the engine, as well as the total total air formed in the total air exhaust in the uh, that is a bypass ratio that. Due to due to these two things, uh, uh, spillage drag is formed, and next one is wave drag. Wave drag is generally formed due to the shock waves that is in forms in front of the in front of the nacelle structure as well as the exhaust of the nacelle structure. And uh, this is the this is the area of shows where the where the increase in wave drag as well as the with respect to the shock waves formed in front of the nacelle structure. And it, it, uh, this diagram shows with respect to the coefficient of drag as well as the Mach number. Uh, and data line shows the drag rise Mach number and uh, uh, this data line shows the Mach number with respect to the wave drag as well as the coefficient of drag with the Mach number. Next one is we are going to calculate the inlet width of the inlet width of the four body. Generally, the inlet of the inlet, generally the inlet of the four body is like a elliptical shape. So we are by using the elliptical formula, we are going to calculate the shape of the inlet lip. That is x by 2b whole square plus y by v whole square equal to 1, where a is the major super elliptic axis as well as b is the minor elliptic super axis, and m is the elliptical exponent of the exponent of the inlet lip. Where b is the constant that is d dhl by dth divided by 2. Dhl is the highlighted diameter and dth is the throat diameter. By using this formula, we are going to calculate the shape of the inlet lip. Next one is internal contour. Internal contour is calculated by using empirical value that is the diffusion ratio and a fan, a fan, entry, fan, entry, fan entry area to the throat area ratio that is the ranges between the 1.25 to 1.35 according to the Nakawa and design rules. By using this formula we will calculate the internal contour. Next one is external contour. External contour is calculated by using uh, Small y divided by capital I equal to C into small x divided by capital I, capital X 4 power 0.5, uh, 1 minus 1.5, 1.5 C into n x, x by x, x by n, x by x 4 power n, and uh, x by x by x into 1.5 divided by b plus x by x whole square, where x is, here x is nothing but the length of the four body, and y is nothing, y is nothing but d max divided by dhl divided by 2. D max is the maximum diameter and DHL is the highlighted diameter of the inlet curve. And B and B equal to 0.05 according to the Nakawa and design rules and C equal to 1.0 which is comes under the Nakawa and design rules. Once we are calculating the shape of the inlet lip and the external contour and the internal contour, we are going to assume the four body four body design. Once finishing the four body design, we are going for the after body design method. After body is nothing but the, that's a, the exhaust of the nasal structure, that is the exhaust nozzle section. This is the diagram shows the after body of the nasal structure and where, where RA is nothing but the bow tail edges and LA is the length of the after body and D max is the maximum, maximum diameter of the after body and D9 is the bow tail exit, exit diameter. By using this formula that is R A divided by D max equal 0 0.04 divided by 1 minus M D into A whole square. And M D is the drag base Mach number and R A is the boat tail radius and D max is the maximum diameter. Here tan beta C equal to con constant that is D max divided by D9, D9 into 2 L A. D9 is nothing but the uh, nozzle exa exhaust diameter, D max is the maximum diameter. Here beta is a constant value that is the 8 degree uh, the, within the, this angle. Once finishing the after body design method and four body design method, we are going we are going to calculate the nasal drag estimation method. That is a drag evaluation, generally drag evaluation using the using by two experimental method. One is internal experiment method, another one is computational fluid dynamics techniques method. And generally the nasal drag estimation is uh, estimated by using two methods, one is on design method, another one is off design method. And in our design method, that is uh, mass uh, critical mass flow rate as well as the drag base Mach number within the limit. And for half design method, the critical mass flow rate as well as the drag base Mach number outside the limit. So by using uh, two design method, we are going we are going to calculate the drag na natural drag estimation for the 
four body four body method. There are two two method is only internal experiment method. Another one is uh, computational fluid dynamics method. In internal experiment method generally used for the, to find find out the aerodynamic characteristics of the NASA structure as well as the uh, lift drag and the thrust ratio. And CFD technique is generally used for say, mathematical tools find out the flow, find out the flow uh, flow of uh, flow of air as well as the there is any problem arising uh, arising from the flow of fluid within the in the engine section. Computational fluid dynamics used for the solving the problems. And generally the drag evaluation is uh, generally the drag evaluation is calculating calculating the sum of the drag produced by the aircraft that is a profile drag. As well as the wave drag, as well as the spillage drag, by using by uh, uh, some of the these th three drags, the natural drag estimation should be calculated. First, we are going to see about the four body drag the, the drag method. In four body drag method, the assumption is that the uh, mass flow rate is uh, less than the critical mass flow rate, as well as the uh, Mach number is uh, greater than the drag based Mach number. Then the coefficient of drag uh, coefficient of drag can be written by uh, Coefficient of drag, drag divided by coefficient of friction equal to uh, 1 plus 1 by 3 into 1 minus dHL divided by dmax into LF, uh, LF divided by dmax and 1 plus 1 by 4 into 1 minus F of, F of, uh, F of, uh, MFR into Amax divided by AHL. Here uh, dHL is the highlighted diameter of the four body and dmax is the maximum diameter of the four body and uh, LF is the length of the four body and uh, Amax is the maximum area and AHL is the highlighted area. Uh, C is nothing but the coefficient of drag as well as the CF is nothing but the coefficient of friction. Coefficient of friction is calculated by using this formula that is CF, CF into S wet divided by AMX. S wet is nothing but the four body vector area and CF is nothing but the Free body spin friction coefficient A max is the maximum maximum area of the uh, four body and uh, CF is constant by using Naga one day includes that is 0 0.45 divided by log R into uh, 2.58 that is constant which is uh, which is for the Naga one day GTF Naga one day includes for the GTF engine and uh, for the data condition ma mass flow rate is uh, mass flow rate is but equal to one so this formula. So the, the coefficient of drag formula can that, that is within this section come within this section in this section going to zero. So we are going to get the, we are going to get with only this formula. So therefore C D naught divided by C B equal to one plus one by three into one minus D H L divided by D max D L F divided by D max. Here the this is the exact formula for the datum condition datum condition for of the four body design method and four body for, for the four body design method drag estimation drag uh, estimation is d equal to one by two rho v square a max into cd here cd is the coefficient of drag and rho is the density density of the density of the fluid and v is the velocity of the velocity of the nozzle and a max is the maximum area. And uh, once we are calculating the uh, four body drag, uh, drag, uh, we are going to calculate the after body drag. That is, the after body drag is uh, calculated using similar formula. That is similar method as we are using in the four body design method. That is, the condition is changed for the after body, the after body drag estimation method. This uh, Mach number is greater than uh, greater than drag is Mach number. This is the design domain for the uh, after body drag method. By uh, once we are calculating the four body design method, uh, after body design method, and uh, four body drag estimation method, and the uh, after body drag estimation, we are going, we are going to plot up the natural design parameters for the GTF 11 engine. This is, is the, the, the draft should be plotted with respect to the diameter as well as the uh, thrust of the thrust of the uh, uh, engine. And this is the diagram shows shows the where the where the thrust is increased with respect to the diameter of the engine as well as the thrust of the engine. And this is the exhaust curve shows the uh, thrust is increased with respect to with respect to the increase in diameter. And this is the diagram shows the thrust is increased with respect to the length of the engine. And as it has to be plotted between the length of the engine as well as the thrust of the engine. Generally the 
the the thrust value is constant along the constant along the uh, stable condition that is y equal to 2.407 x or 0.387 say for a, for the stable condition of the aircraft for with respect to the length and thrust of the engine and for the diameter and thrust of the engine the the stable condition that is the thrust value is 1.08720x x for 0.4134 and this is the constant with respect to the Nakawan design rules. Once finishing the, once we were calculating the nasal for body nasal design as well as the after body design design, we are, going, we are going to calculate the drag estimation by using the internal experiment method as well as the computational fluid dynamics method. Generally, two methods used for the drag calculation of drag estimation. Next, we are uh, once finishing this, we are going for the structural analy analysis of the nasal structure. Uh, one is uh, uh, finite element analysis method and uh, finite volume analysis method and aeroelastic analysis, fatigue analysis and the boundary element method. The, 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 these are the methods used for the analyzing the structure of the nasal structure. First one is uh, structural analysis. Uh, structural analysis generally used for the uh, Calculating the loads, stresses, and as well as the ther thermals which is acting on the acting over the surface of the nozzle. Finite element methods are used for the uh, solving these problems. That is, how much of loads it will stand, the stand, how much of stresses it will stand, as well as the, the thermal resistance of the structure. Next one is dynamic analysis. Dynamic analysis is used for the uh, calculating the frequencies as well as dampings, vibrations, and more shapes. Most of, uh, for the, most of analysis within the engine check, uh, engine section of the nozzle. Uh, finite volume analysis method used for the dynamic analysis purpose. And next one is error elastic analysis. Error elastic analysis generally used for the analyzing the structure of the wing as well as the uh, nasal uh, nasal structure and wing structure. And uh, the, the, this uh, airframe airframe structure. These are these are these are, these are structures are used for comes under the air elastic analysis. They are calculating the inertial force and as well as the elastic limit and find out the aerodynamic characteristics of the structure. Generally, air elastic analysis are used. Next one is fatigue analysis. Fatigue analysis is used for the uh, F1DT analysis uh, with, re with respect to the fatigue and dynamic testing. Uh, next one is air acoustic analysis. Air acoustic analysis is generally used for reducing the Noise vibrations, which is comes and which is which is comes from the engine, and uh, the boundary element analysis methods and uh, computational air acoustic analysis are two methods to uh, find out the uh, uh, acoustics. One is boundary element method, another one is computational air acoustic. To reducing the, uh, the reducing the sound producing from the engine, we using the sound absorbing materials as well as the uh, advanced design technology. So we, so we are reducing the uh, noise we are producing from the engine. And boundary element, uh, boundary element is a uh, finite element tool used for the analyzing the uh, uh, noise produced from the engine. And another one is computational air acoustic method. It's a mathematical tools like as uh, computational fluid dynamics. And it is used for the uh, solving the problems related to the air acoustics. And and next one is uh, this is the diagram shows the uh, structural analysis for the nozzle. Once we are loading, once we are applying the load within this section, the structure should not be should not be deformed from this structure, as well as it should not be should not be cracked and uh, it should not be elongated from this structure. These are the these are the main uh, main considerations which is involved in the structural analysis. And uh, if the load is acting over the top of the nozzle. Uh, the structure should not be deflected from the uh, from the normal position as well as it should not be cracked cracked and it should not be deformed from this original position. So all on this position we are using the structural analysis by using finite element analysis method. These are the analysis for the uh, natural structure. Next we are going to see about the geometric and dimensional tolerance for the nasal. Geometric analysis and dimension tolerance for the nozzle is a, a system for defining and communicating the engineering tolerance to the manufacturers to and the productioners as well as the designers. And it's, it's a, a, a symbolic as a language 
for communicating the engineering drawings as well as the engineering dimension and it tells the degree of accuracy and the it tells the degree of accuracy and precision to the uh, manufacturers uh, when we are going to design the manufacturing when we are going to design the manufacturing components and this is the example for the uh, small hole that is uh, this is the feature frame to frame and uh, this symbol shows the uh, uh, diameter characteristics as well as this is the tolerance and C A B is nothing but the datum of the datum for the hole and uh, G D A T is uh, generally used for the nominal geometry of the parts and assemblies and it is allow is used to allow the very variable in form and as the possible future variations and it is allow the variation between the features as well as the dimensional tolerance. And next, uh, next one is drawing and tolerance, which is involved in the GD and the one is drawing, dimensioning and tolerance. Drawing is used for the interrupt and uh, create, the, create the engineering drawings by means of the uh, designers as well for the production as for the manufacturers. And the, for the dimensioning in the sense, it is uh, used for the communicating the dimensions to the, uh, uh, to the designers for as well as the manufacturers. Tolerance in the sense, we specify the how much of variation is subject accept when we are going for the designing purpose and these are the things which is involved in the drawing dimension and tolerance tolerancing next one is basic information included in drawing that is projector views cross section views table views as well as the dimension in projector views it shows the it shows the all views in all views for the uh, designing con designing components that is uh, front view right side view as well as the top view which is uh, cross section view that is isometric view it shows the all, all views for the uh, geometric, geometric diagrams and next one is cross section view cross section view says, says shows the interior section of the components and the next one is table table says uh, it's fixed the lower side lower right corner of the drawing sheet and it says include the designer's names as well as the material properties as scale, scale ratio and these are the things which is included in the table and next one is dimensions the dimensions tells the accuracy accuracy of the components as well as the uh, tolerance of the components and finally types of dimensional tolerance used in the GD and one is limit dimensioning another one is plus or minus dimensioning in limit dimensioning that is uh, this is the diagram used for the limit dimensioning as well as the plus or minus dimensioning and uh, for this dimension that is the dimension should be range between the 1.375 to 1.379 Within a within a 3.72 three 3.79 that that is uh, 1.7 3.76 1.378 that is 1.379 and next one is plus or minus tolerance that is uh, the dimension between range from 1.375 plus or minus 0.04 the both the methods are acceptable for the GDNT process that is uh, the dimension is range between the 375 375 to uh, 375.2379 this is the two, two, two types of dimensional tolerance which is involved in the GD engine. Next one is geometric tolerance for the uh, geometric character symbols. Uh, it, it is generally it is used to specify the shape of the features that is straightness, flatness, circularity, cylindricity, angularity, perpendicularity and parallelism. And this is the diagram shows the geometric character symbols of the uh, geometric character symbols for the GD and T and it has to be it has to be it has to be given three types of tolerance one is form tolerance and profile tolerance oriented orientation tolerance location tolerance as well as the runoff tolerance in form tolerance it includes the straightness uh, that is characteristics involves straightness flatness and circularity cylindricity in comes under the form tolerance in profile tolerance uh, profile of the line and as well as the profile of the surface in orientation, orientation comes under the angularity, perpendicularity, parallelism and uh, 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 parallelism and angularity which is comes under the orientation and next one is uh, location location in the sense that is a position, concentricity and symmetricity comes under the location and final one is run out, it's run out tells the circular run out as well as the total run out and it has to be comes under the three individual features that is uh, individual or related features or related features for the individual features. This is for the geometric characteristics symbol for the GDNT process.
next we are going to see the uh, GDNT, 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 GDNT for the nasal structure. This is the nasal structure of the aircraft. This is angularity. This is inlet diameter as well as the outlet diameter. So it's the radius. Nothing but the data matches. This is the length of the nozzle. So we are going to switch feature frames that is uh, the dimension, uh, diameter of the nozzle as well as the tolerance, material symbol, datum of the nozzle. This is a small example for the nozzle structure probably when we are using in the, when we are using in GDNT process. Next we are going to see about the uh, some example for the geometric characteristics. First one is straightness. The, this is the actual 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 diagram for the which is uh, designed by the designers. Once we are going for the manufacturing process, how much of tolerance is acceptable for the manufacturing? That is a uh, 2.02 Y tolerance is uh, acceptable for the manufacturing. And it has uh, the 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 two the two materials should be uh, uh, lie between the two uh, two perpendicular axes. And the acceptable tolerance is 0 0.0025 when we are going for the manufacturing process that is for exact uh, straightness, straightness material. Next one is straightness at MMC and this is the actual diagram. It's, uh, for the 16.04 is a virtual condition for virtual condition and when, when we are going for the manufacturing process that is uh, that uh, the two cylinders lie between the tolerance zone that is 0 0.0 time, uh, 0 for diameter at the MMC section. When we are accept the boundary, the maximum diameter of the fin with the perfect form is 0 0.04 and uh, with the maximum diameter of the gauge will accept the 0 0.04 variation and uh, with the minimum diameter of the gauge will accept the 0 0.0015 uh, 0 0 0 up to the straightness, straightness at the MMC. This is the example for straightness for GDNT. Next one is circular, circularity. In circularity in the sense that that's the each circular, this is the diagram shows circularity uh, and the each, each circular element of the surface perpendicular to the axis lie between the 0 0.0225 mm apart from the apart from between these this two surfaces. The, the, the specified limit is showed, showed between the 0 0.25 white tolerance zone. Next one is parallelism. Parallelism shows that that is that, uh, the surface must lie between the two parallel planes that is 0 0.012 mm apart from the parallel datum plane and uh, the possible orientation of future axis that is the possible orientation of future axis that is 0 0.02 mm cylinder zone within the this axis this diagram shows the datum feature of the parallelism uh, diameter symbol as well as the tolerance as well as the uh, datum of the parallelism Next one is cylindricity. Cylindricity involves uh, stress. So this is the actual diagram so, so done by the designers when you are going for the manufacturing press. The cylindrical surface must be lie between the 0 0.25 mm apart from the uh, cylindrical surface. And uh, it, it, uh, the, surface, the surface of the cylindricity tells the accuracy as well as the uh, reliability, reliability of the uh, designing, designing, designing components. And this is the example for straightness, parallelism and cylindricity. And next one is perpendicularity. In perpendicularity in the sense that it is a 0 0.25 mm wide 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 tolerance zone is acceptable for the manufacturing process. The so possible orientation feature axis comes under the 0 0.025 mm apart from the uh, perpendicular axis. That is the, the future axis must be within the specified limits and it supplies for the view on the as well as the uh, datum axis for the datum axis and the future size axis. This is the next one is angularity. Angularity in the sense of the measuring angularity is equal to measuring the parallelism. That is the, the possible orientation of the actual surface lie between the two parallel planes. 
This is the example for the parallelism. It is lie between the 30 degree apart from the surface of the uh, parallelism. And the datum pen, so the, the datum pen is the lower part of the uh, uh, lower part of the components, and it has to be uh, it has to be lie between the two, two perpendicular axes that is 0.04 mm. Now, final one is conventional tolerancing. Conventional tolerancing in the sense it stress the uh, size of the element as well as the tolerance zone boundary and as well as the pole center axis. And this is the uh, some example for the conventional tolerance of the for the GDNT. And it serves the accuracy as well as the reliability when we are going for the manufacturing process. And this is the some geometric characteristic example for the uh, national structure as well as the geometric characteristics of the uh, geometric characteristics of the national structure. Next one is stack of analysis. Stack of analysis is nothing but identifying the dimensions for the critical as, critical assembly as well as the uh, standard deviation for the uh, calculating the uh, assembly tolerance as well as the in terms of the standard deviation. It's, it is used to calculate the average dimension that is the uh, sum of the mean dimension signs. So really the, the formula is used to, used to calculate in the stack of analysis that is sigma assembly equal to sigma 1 square, sigma 2 square, sigma 3 square. Once calculating the, the average of the sigma value, we are going to be calculating the standard deviation. That is sigma 1 equal to tolerance, total tolerance. Total tolerance is calculated by using this formula that is sigma, sigma assembly. It is whole divided by 6. By using this formula, we are going to, we are going to calculate the standard devi deviation. Next one is process capability for the stack of analysis. That is the these two, two minus three sigma is the uh, lower limit and plus three sigma is the upper limit. And CEP is the process capability for the stack of analysis. And between the within the, these two lines, the, the material should be the material should be very very reliable and as well as it should be very should be hundred percent quality within this section as its efficiency of the uh, efficiency of the material should be 99.9% within within do, these two section this tells the process capability for the uh, components in the stack of analysis the, the assembly tolerance greater than equal to actual assembly tolerance it, the resistance should be reliable as well as the, the resistance should be uh, quality in the sense and uh, as well as the uh, 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 reliability in the sense we are, we are, we are assuming that the assembly tolerance is uh, greater than equal to assemb actual assembly tolerance. This is the uh, this is a small uh, small introduction about the stack of analysis. Next one is design checks. Design checks is nothing but the it's a review of uh, it's a review of schemes focusing under the design standards as well as the quality, material type, scale ratio, datum and part name as well as the designer's name. These are which is included in the design checks. Finally, design checks are used for the uh, verifying the whether the product is whether the product is reliable as well as the whether the product product is uh, fulfill the customer requirements as well as the voice of the customer. Uh, generally, these methods this is uh, this methods is used for the customer requirements for as well as the voice of the customers, and it includes the scale ratio for the. Uh, scale ratio for the diagram, material type, which material going to use and the quality of the material and design standards, data of the material as well as the part name, design and name these are the things which is included in the design checks and if the che checking to be followed from the process that is inception to the construction and this is the this is the logo for the design checks that is inception to the construction is mainly used for the design checks uh, we, are we are going to uh, focus in the scheme on the design standards this is the general introduction about the um, design checks so finally i conclude that the natural structure design should be uh, based on the parameters of the engine as well as the aerodynamic characteristics and the aerodynamic performance which has to be involved with the we are going to consider the uh, natural structure design as well as the natural drag estimation and this project is I have done based on the, my 4 years uh, aeronautical engineering program as well as my experience and I would like thank to Mr. Thagaraja Kumar sir for the giving me an opportunity uh, to uh, present this paper. Thank you.